I have 15 minutes. I don't have very long. Um, thank you ever so much uh, for joining me here. Uh, thank you for Alex to invite me for a, a second year. Uh, it's a fantastic event, and hopefully uh, both I can give you a perspective and the guys that are coming on in a minute can give you a really interesting look uh, at the global perspective of prop tech at the minute. So let me start with one um, core statement, which I think is uh, a particularly important statement for me, is that prop tech is a little bit like teenage sex. Now, some of you will remember what teenage sex was like. Some of you will remember it slightly further back than others. But the point is, at the minute, what I'm seeing around the global world of prop tech is it's all about sex. The point is, everyone's talking about it. Everyone thinks everybody else is doing it. And everyone claims that they're doing it. The fact is, no one has a freaking clue what they're doing. That's why it's a little bit like teenage sex. Now, I'll come back onto that slide later on, because actually, the advice I would give anybody are the same bits of advice I would have given myself as a teenager. So I'll finish the, uh, the, the conference off with that. OK, let's look at this globally. At the minute, uh, Unisu, which is uh, the company that I co-founded, we're currently tracking over 6,000 different prop tech businesses. This is a hugely, hugely burgeoning marketplace. And it has been for the last three to five years. It's not only 6,000 businesses, but we're looking at over 100 countries which are being represented. We're looking at businesses from Japan to Nepal to the far-reaching sides of Africa all the way out to Chile. This is a truly global phenomenon that we're seeing. And I've had the great fortune of traveling to pretty much every single continent in the last six months, talking at various conferences and seeing what these markets are doing all at the same time. It's a fascinating perspective, which hopefully in and around the definition of prop tech, which I'm just putting up here, uh, I'm going to give you some global perspectives. Now, last year, I came out with this to put a bit of a grounding for everybody to understand what prop tech meant. I'm going to wrap around my global perspectives of prop tech around this definition. So I'm going to start with this. Prop tech is one small part of the wider digital transformation of the real estate industry. You heard Alex say that earlier on, uh, but it's very true. Let's just look at one small example of that, which seems to be affecting a lot of the global markets at the minute. So this slide is actually showing the difference between two business models in the real estate industry. The first one is purple bricks, which is currently, it started in uh, England, which is an online estate agent, against Countrywide, which is the incumbent. It's the huge, antiquated real estate industry. It has multiple offices. It has multiple brands. It's the biggest real estate agent in the UK. What we're seeing here, let's see if this works. Oh, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't work. Let's go back. So what we're seeing on this slide, if we can go back one, is we're seeing the share price difference over the last, uh, since what, January 2016. You can see that the city, the investors, are saying that the digital model, 350% up in terms of its share price, whereas the antiquated model was at 71% below. That is what the city is determining is a successful digital transformation of the industry. Now, it's actually not even 71%. It's a lot lower than that at the minute, because Countrywide have had some massive problems. But the point is here is the city is believing that digital transformation is happening with models like Purple Bricks. I was in Sydney last week. Everybody was talking about what Purple Bricks are doing to the industry in Sydney. Are they coming? Are they going to disrupt our business model? Are they going to change everything that we're doing? The simple answer is no, not necessarily. I actually don't believe in the Purple Bricks model. I don't believe in the online estate agency model. The fixed fee models are very difficult. They're very loss-making. But what is key here is it's the market going through digital transformation. It's the market changing. It's the market adapting to the way that the consumers are demanding of change. OK, the most important slide for me. It describes a movement driving a mentality change. And mentality is the single most important word I can ever say. 
within the real estate industry and its consumers regarding technology-driven innovation. Just very quickly, mentality is the point here. It's not the technology. So to put it into the example, it's 10 years ago since smartphones came in, which is the technology. And now, if you look at the adoption of all the different sorts of technology amongst the user groups around the world, 92% of millennials have a smartphone. The silent generation, 30% have a smartphone. Now, that's the technology. That is driving this mentality change. Everybody now wants something which is quicker, easier, more efficient. And they're getting that from their tablets and their phones and all the other technology around them. This is one example. But the key for all of us here is not to think about now, because this is today. If our businesses aren't mobile and agile today, we're in trouble. Because if we fast forward, I think this is going to reverse. In 15 years' time, I think you'll find the millennials in 15 years' time won't be using the smartphone. They're actually going to drop off because there's going to be a barrier. There's going to be a friction between intention and action in the future, which is a phone. And they've got to touch things, and they've got to press things. We're going to be seeing things which are in eye. We're going to be seeing things which are in ear, simultaneous translation. We're going to see things where they can just do voice search. There is no surprise that Amazon is winning this battle of voice search in the homes, because it's not about the smart home anymore. In 15 years' time, these guys, the Gen Xs and baby boomers, will still be using the mobile phone, which is great, but the new market will be the millennials coming through, and it won't be the smart home. It'll be a smartphone. It'll be something else. So the key message around this mentality shift is simply the real estate industry has got to stop thinking about the consumers now. And the biggest challenge I'm seeing around the world right now is that everybody's starting to think about PropTech today. You guys are here, fantastic. You're learning about PropTech now. But the real challenge of technological adoption is about the consumer of the future. It's about the employee of the future. So understand technological adoption, understand the changes which are happening, and it's by coming to conferences like these, which Alex Blackprint Future have put on, that will help you. But stop thinking about the consumer and the employee now. Start thinking about them in the future. OK, the last little bit of the presentation, or sorry, the uh, definition here. It's in the data assembly, transacting, and designs of buildings and cities. Berlin is no different to Sydney which is no different to London, which is no different to New York. All of our city infrastructure was originally built around rivers. They were the networks upon which our cities were developed. The future cities may not be the guys or the buildings built around a river network. They are going to be, one, they're going to be cities which are built around new frameworks, new buildings, new networks, new infrastructures. There is no surprise that Google purchased a 12-hectare land outside of Toronto to build a city from the internet up. It hasn't got a river network. It's not relying on old systems to, on which to build its city. It's an entirely new city built from nothing other than an infrastructure network, because that's what PropTech will start to do. It's not just about our smart homes. It's not just about our smart buildings. The wonderful thing that we have with PropTech is not being driven necessarily by the industry. It's not necessarily being driven by the consumers. What we're finding in this assembly transacting design of buildings and cities is being driven. Excuse me. Oh, that's fizzy orange, that is. Uh, it's being driven by governments. It's being driven by countries. So we've got this perfect pinch point of both angles. So we're in an ideal situation. OK. The other reason it's quite exciting is there's so many different parts of the ownership life cycle. What we like to do is we like to split it up into five or six different areas. We've got the build phase, the rent phase, the buy stage, the sell stage, the move stage, and ultimately, one more, which is manage. We should be breaking down our property market into these six stages, because prop tech impacts every single one of them. So, what I want to do is I want to give you some context, because we're going to be bringing up some people on the stage in a minute to talk about their local markets. I wanted to give you some information about your local market. How does Germany stack up in prop tech? So we're currently analyzing 273 companies in Germany. I actually think it's probably closer to 300 to 350. 
What's interesting, as you'll see from the right-hand side, over a third are dealing with the manage stage. That could be managing of rentals. It could be managing of buildings. But they're all dealing with the management stage. Interestingly, 14% are dealing with the rental stage. Bearing in mind how significant the rental market is in Germany, I'm surprised that prop techs aren't getting as um, sort of uh, is involved in the rental stage of the market. I want to give you guys a little quiz. Top five cities for prop tech companies. Number five, anyone tell me number five? Shout out if you want. Hmm? No, nope, not Tel Aviv, no. <laughs> Although there are a lot of Germans in Tel Aviv. Number five, anyone else? In Germany, pr preferably. Okay, I'll tell you. So in fifth place, Stuttgart. In fourth? Frankfurt. Cologne's not even there. Hamburg, the Hamburgers up the top. Munich, and then lastly, we've got Berlin. So Berlin, obviously, is a very, very active hub for the prop tech market at the minute. It's grabbing most of the market share, which is considerable. Um, I then just want to focus on a couple of other areas for you. So looking at how prop tech uh, companies are actually being founded. So we've done an analysis around the world, and this seems to be a pretty common theme. 2015, so far, seems to be the peak time when prop tech businesses were actually founded. If you take that on a stage, certainly in Germany, most seem to be around the B2B functionality, which is certainly interesting for me. And most seem to be focusing around the residential sector. And I think most of the growth area in the next couple of months, we will see around construction and retail as our data set gets far fuller. But I hope, if nothing else, that gives you some pretty interesting analysis about your local prop tech market and what you are doing. Um, because like I said, prop tech, I've got two and a half minutes to, what, to tell you why prop tech is like teenage sex and to give you some lessons. So here you go. You've all got to do it at some point, like teenage sex. You've all got to learn how to do it. So how do you learn? Talk to people. Talk to your peers. Talk to your friends. Talk to your companies. Understand how prop tech is done. Understand how prop tech is being implemented inside of businesses. Speak to people who've done it before. You did that when you were younger, I'm sure. You can do that now. Start having a chat with people. Try it out. I'm sure some of you did when you were teenagers. Try prop tech. Don't hesitate to try a couple of companies, two or three companies. Work with them. Talk to them. Trial them out, experiment. Might get a bit messy, but it'll work out in the end. Don't worry if you screw it up. Teenage sex was a bit messy. You sometimes made mistakes. It's the same in business. You will screw it up from time to time. Ultimately, the one thing you've got to make sure you do is don't get left behind. You've all heard the stories of the 40-year-old virgin. You don't want that to happen in the real estate industry by not doing anything about it and sitting there saying, it's not happening, it's OK, don't worry about me. The analogies of prop tech within this space are so very true of where we were when we were teenagers. So without further ado, I'm one minute ahead of schedule. I just want to say thank you very much for my time. Just a little bit of blurb about what prop tech is. Uh, Unisu as a platform is actually launching in November. If you're interested, you can have a little look on there. Um, it's just there to promote PropTech around the world and allow you guys to actually have a look at all the different PropTech businesses there are, analyze and understand what you may need to be working with. So without further ado, on that basis, I'd like to uh, invite all my esteemed panel up to the stage and we'll have a chat about global PropTech. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much. <laughs> right.